chaired that committee for six years. I worked hard as I possibly could to get it reformed and get real reform in there. And I had all the figures and facts and figures from the Office of Management Budget as well as the Social Security Administration to say that I had a plan that would work. But I couldn't even sell it to the White House. And that was too bad and I think that was a that was an opportunity, opportunity lost. But we have to reform the system. Now you talk about raising the age of retirement. For God's sakes, my 15 year 15 grandfields are going to live longer than most of us in this room are going to live. So how can you say you raise the retirement age if you were doing it a number of years out? If you're doing it 40 years out or 15 years out? And people who say, I'll never raise the age, you're sticking your head in the sand. And people said that Social Security is still solvent, they're lying to you. They are lying to you because right now, our taxpayers are gonna have to step up to the plate and start putting money into Social Security. The dirty little secret of Social Security was that Social Security was having a surplus that was help financing the rest of the government. Those days are over. We did not have, excuse me, you did not have enough children. <laughs> first came on board, I think the average life expectancy was 62, the retirement age was 65. Obviously that was going to work. And it did work. And kids, and they were having a lot of kids and there were a lot of the young people supporting very few older people. Now, that reservoir of young people in comparison with the older people has shrunk. So this surplus is basically gone. Now those will say, well, there's bombs in there. Yeah. I'm getting Social Security, don't send me a bond, I want money. <laughs> and so do you that are in the retirement age and have paid into Social Security all your life. So what is happening? The flow of money that was going from Social Security into the federal government, that now has reversed. The money now is having to come out of the general fund, which is tax money, and going into the Social Security, and that's going to increase every year. So this thing has got to be solved, and it's got to be looked at very, very carefully. And we need to make some very painful choices, and it's going to be very painful. Social Security is going to be there for anyone in or near the age of retirement. Congress is not going to change. No president is going to allow it to change for anybody who's already planning retirement and is 45 or, or older, or maybe even 40 and older. But people under 40, are going to have to adjust their lives. And they're going to have to adjust it so that we're going to add a couple more years to their working working life. Now, as far as I'm concerned, I don't like retirement. You know, I didn't voluntarily retire. <laughs> but I think that it's something that I think some people are not going to be able to work beyond 65. Some people can't even work until they're 62 or 65 years old. And that's why we have, we have to make allowance for them in anything that we do. And we also, I think, in my opinion, it's important to have a provision in whatever we do to the money that people have paid into the Social Security in some way come back to them if they should die before they reach retirement age. These are things that have to be done, and they have to be looked at very, very carefully. But there's going to be some tough roads ahead. But I'm going to tell you right now, if we stick to it and stick to our game plan, and if we turn out like we did a few months ago, it is going to be one of the greatest nights of November 2012 that you have ever seen. <laughs> Florida has only one statewide elected official. After 2012, that should be zero. And you know who he is. And I think we can, We have some good candidates. We have some good people out there right now talking about it. George Lemieux from Broward County is talking about it. And there's some other good candidates out there that are looking at it and talking about it. And of course, Jeb Bush is always in the wings. And if he, he, he keeps saying he's not gonna do it. But watch it. <laughs> 
and all he's got to do is put his name on the ballot and he's in. So we have we have a good 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 backup plan for many 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 great candidates. Uh, and I tell you right now, I am so proud of the job that you have done and that you are doing. And I would really be remiss if I didn't tell you how delighted I was that evening in November when Alan West. <laughs> Representatives. I said on many occasions in introducing him and talking to him that he one day may be the first African American Speaker of the House of Representatives. <laughs> of the whole freshman class, there is not one that has risen to the top any more than Alan, uh, than, uh, Alan West. He is absolutely just doing a great job, a bang up job. He's, he has just got to keep on the way he's going on the straight and narrow, and he is going to be there long after the next election. And I'm telling you right now, they already have a target on his back. They put it there quickly. And we're going to be going through something called redistricting. And it's going to be a weird process this year because even though we have all the, all the control of both houses in the Florida legislature, there's some kind of a committee that's going to be formed put that together and to draw the districts in different ways. So we've got to keep an eye on that and see what, what is going to come out of that. Uh, so we've got we've got our work cut out for us. But I think we will I'm, I'm confident that we will keep Alan West as our congressman as long as he wants to be there and that redistricting is not going to be able to take him. Again, I want to thank all of you. You don't know how good it makes me feel to see so many of you here and so enthusiastic when we're almost two years away from an election. But it's going to be on your shoulders. And you're the one that's going to have to bring victory to this because this is where the voting starts, right here. You are the ones that get the voters out. You are the ones that are going to be walking the precincts. You are the one that's been going to all the things you have to go to to cheer the candidate on and keep them going. This is vitally important. And I am so convinced that you are going to again deliver in 2012. Keep it up. God bless you. God bless you.